Hey guys, welcome to Uptown. My name is Kevin and I'm wondering how your summer is going. Have you been sleeping in, playing outside, swimming? Well, this week we are gonna be talking about joy. We aren't talking about the joy that comes from eating endless amounts of ice cream and staying up late. We are talking about the joy that only comes from God by knowing how much he loves us. But before we dive into that, let's play a game. We're gonna play one arm, two arms, and no arms. Here's how you play. There will be a picture that comes up of someone holding up one arm, two arms, or no arms. You have to guess what you think it will be. All right, let's pick now. Put one arm up, if that's your choice, two arms, if that's your guess, or no arms. Lock in your choice, here we go. How'd you do? Did you get it right? You know what, let's do this again. Make your choice now, one arm, two arms, or no arms. Lock it in and go. Did you get it right? I think we should do it one more time. Make your choice now, one arm, two arms, or no arms. Lock it in and go. How many did you get right? I hope you had a great time because I did. Let's get ready to get into the Bible by worshiping God together. It up again with a spark. The spark caught fire in my heart. And I can see it lighting up the dark.
everyone, I'm Susie, and I'm so excited that we get to hang out today. I'm wondering what you've been doing this summer. Have you been playing outside a lot? Maybe you're staying up later. How fun is that? Have you watched any movies? I don't know about you, but I love a good movie. It's just so fun getting wrapped up in all the twists and turns of what's happening especially when the characters face something crazy and hard and even scary. And, and you're like sitting on the edge of your seat and you're wondering how it's all gonna work out. Will it work out? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's a, okay, okay. Let me bring this down a little bit because movies are so great. And no one wants to really watch a two hour movie that's all about rainbows and sunshine, right? I mean, that's not fun. That doesn't make for a great story. We want to see the unexpected stuff. We want to see an epic story with a super awesome ending. Now today, I'm gonna tell you about a guy named Paul. And I have a couple friends who are gonna be the actors and help us out. Hey, Paul. Now we talk about Paul a lot in Uptown. I mean, he's one of the first followers of Jesus and he traveled all over the place telling people the good news of how much God loves them. And you can read all about Paul in the Bible. But Paul didn't travel alone in our story today. This time he had a friend and his friend's name was Silas. Hey Silas, good to see you. Well, the story of Paul and Silas plays out so much like a movie. I mean, it's full of the twists and turns and it's pretty epic. So are you ready to see Paul and Silas? Great, let's do it. Now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be the director calling out the scenes, all right? Okay. Here we go. Quiet on the set. Act one, scene one, and action. Paul and Silas loved God. They couldn't stop telling everyone about Jesus. But not everyone wanted to hear this good news about God. In fact, one day some men got so mad that they got the crowd all riled up. And then, all of a sudden, the crowd around them started to beat up on Paul and Silas. Now, I'm pretty sure they didn't have pool noodles, all right? But what happened was pretty terrible. I mean, here they were, just telling others about Jesus, and now they're getting beat up? What? If you had been Paul and Silas, what would have you done? Would have you fought back? Or would you try to run away? Paul and Silas, they didn't do either of those things. All right, let's pick up where we left off. Paul and Silas, scene two, and action. After Paul and Silas were severely beaten, they were thrown into prison. Can you believe it? Things were not looking good for Paul and Silas. All right. So they were sent to the inner cell of the prison. They had no windows and the guards chained their feet so they couldn't escape. It was dark and probably crowded and the guards were ordered to keep a close eye on Paul and Silas. Cut. So this was really bad. But Paul and Silas knew that God loved them and that he had a plan. But now, here they were, beat up and sore and just like rotting in a prison cell. You know, if you had been in that situation, maybe you would have yelled, let me out, I really don't deserve this. Or maybe you would have lost all hope and completely given up. But remember, Every good story has to include some hard stuff. I think you'll be really surprised when you see what happens next. Okay, here we go. Paul and Silas, scene three, and action. Around midnight, 
Paul and Silas were still chained up in the dark prison. Then they started singing. Of all the things that they could have chosen to do, they chose to worship God. All right, go ahead and sing these words of worship with Paul and Silas if you know it. amazing that even after all that happened to them, even when they didn't deserve to be in prison at all, Paul and Silas chose to sing and praise God because they knew God loved them and he was with them. Paul and Silas chose joy. They chose to trust God. And at that moment, something crazy amazing happened. Are you guys ready for the last scene? All right, here we go. Paul and Silas, scene four. Action. As they were singing, a huge earthquake began to shake the prison. Come on, you guys. Let's pound your legs at home. Let's make this earthquake happen. The earth started shaking and the earthquake was so hard that the entire foundation of the prison started to shake and the prison cell door just flew open. All right, cut. Hold up, guys. Come back, come on, come back. Now listen, you would think that Paul and Silas would see those prison doors and make a run for it and try to escape, but they didn't. Instead, they chose to stay right where they were. And the jailer was terrified, thinking that all the prisoners had just escaped. But Paul and Silas said in the dark, we're all here. So the jailer froze and he turned on the lights and he could see the joy that Paul and Silas had. And he wanted that same joy. He wanted it too. So Paul and Silas told the jailer and his family about how much God loved them and how he sent his only son, Jesus. And right there, right there, the jailer and his family started following Jesus too. They found that same joy and scene. Okay, that was awesome. How about a hand for our actors? Thanks so much, guys. You were incredible. Do you guys see what I mean? That story totally played out like a movie, didn't it? In the middle of the story, they were getting beat up and they were thrown into prison and they were put into a dark, scary jail cell. And we didn't know the end of the story. Just like when you watch an awesome movie, you can't see how things are gonna turn out. But even in the middle of the hard times, Paul and Silas, they had joy. They knew that no matter what, God loved them and he was with them. Actually, Paul wrote down something that he learned about God. Here's what he said about joy. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Joy was so important to Paul he said it twice. Paul was the guy who was getting beat up and was thrown in jail, and yet he chose to praise God. And he's telling us right here that we can have joy. When? Just when things are good? Just when you're getting what you want? Just when you're feeling happy? No, you can have joy always. You see, joy is a lot bigger than happiness. Happiness is based on what's happening around you. But joy, it's much bigger than that. Joy is knowing that without a doubt, no matter what, that God loves you. You can have joy even when your best friend's moving away. When you really wanna hang out with your friends and FaceTiming just doesn't seem the same. You can have joy when 
Your sister's completely driving you crazy, but she's the only one who's there to play a board game with you. You can have joy when things are great and everything's awesome and things are going your way. And you can have joy in the middle of all the hard stuff. Why? Because the God who made you, he loves you more than you could ever imagine. Our big idea is we can have joy because God loves us. Say that out loud with me. We can have joy because God loves us. Now, I want you to make it personal. Say it to yourself. Say, I can have joy because God loves me. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for our story. I thank you that Paul and Silas showed us that they could have joy when things are really hard. So God, would you just remind us that we can have joy when things are going well and we can have joy when things are hard because you love us and you're right there with us. We thank you so much and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Paul and Silas showed us what joy is all about. It's not about what we are going through. It's all about knowing how much God loves us no matter what. So whether your summer is starting out awesome or whether you're going through a hard time, you can have joy when you remember just how much you are loved by God. Katie and Delaney are gonna help us remember that as we go to small group. Welcome back to small group time. I'm Katie and I'm Delaney and I'm so excited to be here and do small group with you today But Katie, can we make this quick? I have a lot on my mind. Whoa, what's going on? Well, you see my best friend's sick and my softball league was canceled this summer and yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear all of that. <sighs> it's just a lot, but it's fine. I guess Delaney we learned today that we can have joy because God loves us Okay, let me show you I have this jar of water. Think of it as the joy that is inside of you, the joy that God gives you. And then I have these rocks and they represent the worries or the trials that you go through. Those rocks seem really small compared to what I'm feeling right now, Katie. Okay, that might be, but I want you to bear with me. I want you to take the rocks okay. and put a few of them in the water. And while you do that, say one thing that's bothering you right now. Okay, well, I'm worried that my best friend's sick. Okay, do you feel better? Not really. Okay, do it again. Put another handful of rocks in and say something else that's bothering you. Okay, well, I'm really upset that my softball league was canceled. Are you feeling any better now? Kind of. Okay, I want you to dump the rest of the rocks in because I know you have a lot of things on your mind. And when you do that, Say one more thing that is bothering you today. Well, I'm really sad that I can't see my friends right now. How do you feel now? I feel better. Good, and did you notice that the water or the joy that you have didn't go away? It just kept rising up and it almost overflowed. Whoa, you're right. It's just like our Bible story today. Paul and Silas had a lot going on and had every reason to be upset, but they chose to have joy. Yes, they went through a lot of trials and a lot of worries, but they chose to have joy because God loves them. Just like you can have joy because God loves you. And you, you can have joy because God loves you. Thanks for reminding me, Katie, that I can always choose joy because God loves me. And guys, God loves you too, so you can always choose joy. You're right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.